Good morning, your majesties. Welcome back to my brand new segment I'm doing on my channel called New Year's with Princess Peyton. That basically means that I tell you guys scary stories from New Year's Eve all the way up until January 28th. And so I hope you guys are enjoying this series or segment that I'm doing. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So um, I have a story time for you guys. This one is called... Hold on. This. Okay, this one is called the House of Terror. Okay. Um, and it says, the car finally gave out. Jeff hit the dashboard in frustration. It was bad enough that the car had to break down, but at night in the rain in the middle of God knows wherever he was, it was a fitting end to this bad week. The week had, oh, the week had seen his wife leave him, taking the kids with her. He had been demoted at his job and was now forced to go back on the road as a salesman. Now this had happened and things weren't going to get any better anytime soon, lovely. Okay, uh, Jeff decided that he might as well try to find a way out of this mess. He considered waiting in his car for another car to come by and help him. The road wasn't often used, though, though, and that might take hours. So Jeff decided to first walk down the road to see if there were any other choices. After walking for a half hour in the pounding rain, Jeff finally came across an old house in the woods. Uh, mm -mm, don't do it. I've seen too many of those in horror movies. Um, now, Jeff had seen enough horror movies. I just said that to make him turn back, but the rain alone was enough to override his sense of fear and trepidation. He walked up the winding road to the door. The house looked to be very old and not kept up well, and Jeff wondered if anyone even lived there anymore. Oh my God. He knocked on the door and to his surprise, it, it was answered rather quickly. An older man looking to be in his late seventies asked him what he wanted. Jeff explained his situation and asked if the man, if the man had a phone or some way to help. The old man said he was weary of travelers but decided that Jeff looked honest enough and let him use his phone. Jeff thanked him and asked his name. He said his name was Joseph Palmer and told Jeff the number of the nearest, of the nearest garage. Jeff made his way through the, oh, through to the phone, noticing that the house looked about as old inside as it did outside and was and was surprised that there was even a phone at the place he called the garage but they said there was nothing they can do until the morning and they would meet him at noon at his car miss mr palmer offered jeff the guest room to sleep for the night Jeff was a bit weary at spending the night at s in such a spooky old house. I would do it. I mean, yes, it, it can be scary, but I would do it for fun. Um, but, oh, um, okay. That's what they said. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Where, where am I? Okay, yeah, he called, okay, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, he called the garage, 
but they said there was nothing they could do until the morning and they would meet him at noon at his car. Mr. Palmer offered Jeff the guest room to sleep in for the night. Jeff was a bit wary at spending the night in such a spooky old house, but decided that the walk back in the rain and sleeping in the car couldn't be much safer than staying at the house. He accepted and was shown to the room. Wow. Uh, the house was adorned with, ad with antique everything. Not a piece of furniture seemed to have been purchased in at least the last 60 years or more. Mr. Palmer showed him the room and bided him good and bided him good night. The man was nice, but the whole situation still left Jeff unnerved. He he just he just tried he just tired oh tired to tell himself that he had watched far watched far too many horror movies as a child. Me <laughs> um the bedroom had a canopy bed, one old lamp, a single window, and a red carpet. A red carpet? Oh. Um, the house was eerily quiet as Jeff laid himself down on the bed. Quiet except for a creak here and a thump there. By now, Jeff's imagination had him too paranoid to sleep as he heard Mr. Palmer outside the room, walking up and down the hallway outside. Up he went and down he went. Then the footsteps stopped right outside his room. Jeff waited, yet nothing happened. A half hour passed and yet he heard nothing except the rain beating outside and the wind howling as the storm blew. Finally, sleep slowly overcame Jeff, even with his nervousness heightened. Slowly, his eyes closed, though he thought he could not, oh, though he thought he could almost hear something scratching at his door. Oh no. Um, Jeff awoke. The storm had passed and daylight was shining through the window curtains. Happy that all his nervousness was for nothing. Jeff got out of bed and checked his watch. He had slept in until 11.20 and had to leave quickly before the people from the garage got to his car. Leaving the room, he was greeted by Mr. Palmer. Ms. Um, Palmer asked him if he had slept well. Jeff replied that he had, that he had, though he had trouble falling asleep. Palmer laughed and asked if he was afraid of the old house at night in the middle of nowhere. Jeff admitted that maybe he was a bit afraid, but he felt silly for it, but he felt silly for it now. He thanked Palmer and said, he had to leave quickly to get to his car. He turned to leave when suddenly something banged his when something banged his head and everything went quite dark. What the hell? Oh um when Jeff came to, he was tied to a chair in the basement. The place reeked of horrible smells. Mr. Palmer walked up to him with a large knife in Oh no, with a large knife in his hand. Jeff screamed and tried to free himself, but only tried but only tired himself out. Um he looked up in horror at Mr. Palmer and asked him why he was doing this and why now. Palmer answered that last night. He would have been nervous, full of fear, and ready for my attack, Palmer would do. No, that wasn't the right, no, that wasn't the right 
time, everyone expects attacks at night. But during the morning, people are more relaxed and the fear is low, making them blind to any chance of harm. Jeff asked him again, why, why was he doing this? What he was going to do with him and said, someone like the garage people would find out what happened, Mr. Palmer. Oh, what happened? Okay, Mr. Palmer said that mishaps happen on highways at night, mainly during storms. So hardly anyone would even think twice as to why he was gone. If anyone actually did start asking questions, Palmer said he had ways to discourage that kind of activity as for why he was doing this. Palmer simply said that Jeff need need not work oh palmer simply said that jeff need not worry about that in fact in fact he need not worry about anything anymore jeff looked into palmer's eyes as he walked towards him his eyes were completely black and jeff tried to scream wow really okay um yeah that's why you don't go up to this is why you don't go to anyone's house even even if it's not in the woods don't do that you guys come on you guys have heard the stories and you guys have heard the stories on the news where people get killed when they go to a stranger's house don't do that you guys like yeah, don't, I know you guys won't do that. Okay, I won't lecture you guys anymore about it. Um, But anywho, what do you guys think of the story? Yes, it's scary. That's why you should not go to strangers' houses. And I'm done lecturing. <laughs> um, But that's going to be it for today's video. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Princess Peyton. Hit the red button to become your majesty. And hit the bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a video. And I love you guys so much. You guys are the best human beings ever made. And you're the king of my heart in the song lyrics of Taylor Swift. And I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Okay, love you. Bye. Mwah.